Hello, Sherry D. Bailey, delivering her first sermon entitled, Beauty for Ashes. I came to deliver a message of hope today. And God is saying he wants to deliver you. He wants to deliver you from despair. And he wants to restore you so that you can walk into your new assignment. I'm here to tell you that your life might be a heap of ashes that has left you scarred from your tumultuous past. Your life might be a heap of dirt that has left you shattered by your pitiful present. Your life may be a heap of mud that has left you petrified by your uncertain future. But God is saying today, he wants to give you beauty for ashes. Let's look at it. Isaiah 4, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read aloud. It says, in that, set, in that day, seven women will take hold of one man. And it says, we will eat our own food and provide our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our disgrace. In that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of the survivors in Israel. Those who are left in Zion, who remain in Jerusalem, will be called holy. All who are recorded among the living in Jerusalem. Verse 4. The Lord will wash away the filth of the women of Zion. Let me say that again. The Lord will wash away the filth of women in Zion. He will cleanse the blood stains from Jerusalem by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. Then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over all those who assemble there a cloud by smoke by day in a glow of flame and fire by night. Over all of the glory will be a canopy. It will be a shelter in a shade from the heat of the day in a refuge in a hiding place from the storm in the rain. That's in the, read, the reading of Isaiah chapter 4 verses 1 through 6. God has already blessed the people of God. Let us continue. In this scripture, there are several phrases that I want to lift up out of these six verses. The first one that I want to lift up is seven. Seven represents completion. Seven represents fulfillment. Seven represents perfection. God completed creation in six days and on the seventh day he rested joshua fulfilled god's command by marching around the walls of jericho seven times with seven priests blowing seven trumpets seven represents perfection in revelation john speaks up through the holy spirit to the seven churches he speaks about seven bowls, seven seals, and seven judgments, and seven new things. Everything God does is perfect. He is righteous perfection. Here are the five phrases I want to lift up out of this text. The first one is take hold. Remember when I read to you, in that day, seven women will take hold of one man. God wants you to take hold of his word in your everyday life. He wants you to be the brilliant diamond he created. When you really get it down in your spirit, who you are and why you were created, you can walk in this new place. In Isaiah 43 and 7, it says you were created to glorify him. How do you do that? You do that by how well you know your father. The truth is, the more I know about 
God, the more beautiful I am. You see, you got to take hold of him. You need to take hold of him like gum stuck to the roof of your mouth. He wants you to know that he is your Jehovah Sabaoth. That means the Lord Almighty. It means that the Lord of hosts will fulfill his, pers his purpose for your life, even when his heavenly creatures fail to do so. You have to visualize how the host of heaven is grasping you in the bosom of his arms, and he's standing with the Father and the Holy Spirit hovering overhead. The storms of life may be raging all around you, but the Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies, he won't let any harm come to you because it's about the grip he has on your life. It's about your connectivity in the relationship that you have with your daddy. This allows you to know in your gut, in your heart, in your spirit, that nothing, and I do mean nothing, can separate you from the love of God. We must awake and we must see. We must see through God's eyes. We must see how the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the everlasting Father, the righteous King, has affirmed I, our identity. And what do I mean? Somebody's asking, what are you saying, Sister Sherry? I'm saying that you got to know without a shadow of a doubt whose you are and who you are. Affirming means you have like a loose screw in a piece of wood and you get the screwdriver and you tighten it. And the more you tighten it, the more secure that piece of wood is. Affirming is a solidifying your own identity in Christ. You need to tighten the screws, baby. So the second phrase I want to lift up out of this text is called, be called. It says, the daughters of Zion desire to be called by the Lord. Isn't that what we really all want, to be called a child of the king? That's the greatest honor, I believe. In reality, you already know you are a child of the king. You're his daughter. So why don't you act like it? Maybe it's because you've been called by so many names that you've been called out of your name. Hoochie, whore, who, you know, the B word. Have you forgotten who you are? God is saying, behold, walk in authority. Recognize who you are. I learned a new name that God calls himself. And you know what it is? It's called Jehovah Mekadesh Kim. I'll say it again. Jehovah Mekadesh Kim. And it means our Lord, our sanctifier. Isn't that awesome? To be called of God is the greatest calling. And I believe we've all been called. And I'm not talking about preachers and deacons and ministers. I'm talking about everybody that walks on the face of the earth is called of God. It says in Jeremiah 1 and 5, before the foundations were formed, I knew you. God says he knew you before he even created the world. That's incredible. God is saying before he spoke the world into existence, you were a sparkle in his eye. He called you by name. Hallelujah. Ha! Isaiah 43 and 1 says, he summoned you by your name. Isaiah 43 and 1 says, he summoned you. Women of God, you've been called by the Lord of hosts to declare his praises, his goodness. And he has some witnesses who can vouch for him, even though he don't need it, because he's God. I just have one question for you. <laughs> what are you waiting on? We've all been called by God, according to Isaiah and Jeremiah. So the second point I want to lift up is wash in the word daily. I want to lift up the text that says he will take away the disgrace. Remember in the scripture where, I, where it says the Lord, and this is verse four, the Lord will wash away the filth of the women of Zion. He will cleanse the bloodstains from Jerusalem 
by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. What is disgrace? You know what it is. Disgrace is sin. It's a veil of self-degradation when we succumb to what we don't realize our own self-worth, our own potential. God says he wants to remove that veil of self-degradation. God says he wants to remove the veil of ineptness when we believe that we're not good enough. He wants to remove the veil of disgrace. He wants to remove the veil of fear and rejection. Go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 8. Give me just a minute because I got to find it again. I have getting the hot flash. Get some feeling, Patrick. God and the Lord God, He's Almighty. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Hold on, let me stop. Okay, here it is, here it is, here it is. I'm going to have to turn my fan on. I'm getting hot. Isaiah 54 and 4. It says, do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. I know I'm speaking to somebody. I can feel it. For your maker is your husband. Your maker is your husband. Don't miss that. Hear me, women of God. Don't miss this. You will forget the shame of your youth. I'm saying it again. And remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. That spoke to me personally because I've been a widow. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. I know I got a witness there. A wife who married young, only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with deep, deep compassion, I will bring you back. Hallelujah. God says, I will bring you back. In a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for just a moment. That's like a blinking of an eye. Just a moment, he's back. But with everlasting kindness, I have compassion on you. Last verse, verse 8. But with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. So God says he will reveal your true beauty when your perspective shifts from self to him. The problem with the diamond is that it cannot see its own reflection. And I'm sure if we saw ourselves through the eyes of God, like this beautiful picture says, perfect, perfect in beauty, God shines through. That's Psalm 50 and 2. Perfect in beauty, God shines through. We need to see ourselves through God's eyes. And I'm sure if we actually saw ourselves through God's eyes, we would be amazed. God says he will take away the filth of the women in Zion. That was everybody, all you women in the church, outside the church, God promised. He will take away our filth, our disgrace, our sin. We can be born again and renewed through the word of God. You see, the more that we know about our father, the more beautiful we are. God says he will take away our disgrace when we wash in the word. All we need to do is pick it up, hide it in our heart, speak it out of our mouths, watch the transformation take place. And remember, First Peter 2 and 9, it says, God says we are his chosen people.
God says we are his royal priesthood. God says that we are a people belonging to him who were set apart to declare his praises. So God redeemed us. And redeem means the one who delivers by paying a price. Jesus paid the price for our sin. You can shake the dirt off your past. You can shake the dirt off your present. You can shake the dirt off your future. And you can walk into your new assignment. The Greek word for deliver is lutru, which literally means to be set free. God has paid the price and he set us free. Your wait is over. We must dust ourselves off and delve into God's word. He wants to give you beauty for ashes. He wants to deliver you from despair. He wants to restore you so that you can walk into your new assignment. The third phrase I want to lift up from the text says, The Lord. The Lord will wash away the filth from the daughters of Zion. As a diamond in the rough, this is how I see ourselves, as a diamond in the rough. Many times in life, we've been dumped on. We've been dumped on because of what people have said about us, thought about us, said, spoken over us. But you got to know that the Lord has decreed your sanctification. Let me say it again. The Lord has decreed your sanctification. You've been washed clean by the blood of the lamb. Who can render a charge against you? I know Isaiah 43 and 13 says, when God acts, who can reverse it? So if my God already promised me that he will deliver my disgrace, my sin, my filth, my shame, then I'm sanctified. I've been washed in the blood of the lamb. And once he does it, no man, no woman, no two-legged creature, can, four-legged creature or anything or anybody can separate me from his love. So you need to stop filling your head up with Satan's filthy lies. God has called you by name. He has sanctified you and he has delivered you. It's time for you to walk into this new place. I know one thing. I wash my face every morning. I wash my car when it's dirty. And I wash my hair when it needs it. But I know when I really want to get clean, I need to wash in the word of God. Ephesians 5 and 6 says, Jesus Christ, the Lord, gave himself up for us, us being the church, the people of God, the kingdom of God, to make us holy by cleansing us with the word of God. That's sanctification, baby. We are sanctified because his blood was shed on Calvary's cross. He did that so he could present us to himself without blemish and without and with flawless perfection that's sanctification baby the only one who can make us whole is the lord we can walk in boldness we can walk in confidence because the lord has cleansed us from all sin hallelujah the fourth phrase i want to lift up from the text is a hiding place god says he will be a shelter in a shade from the storm and the rain Everyone at some point in life has wanted to get away. We are here today because we want to get away from the hustle and bustle of life. How many times in your life can you recall thinking of a place of refuge? Two numbers, I'm sure, to mention. But no matter how many times you thought of it, you probably were not able to get away just at that very moment. However, God is saying he is your hiding place. Whenever you feel lonely, whenever you feel in despair or disgrace, Jesus says, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. And he says, he is our hiding place. He will satisfy all of our needs. He's only a thought away. He's as close as a whisper. And your hiding place doesn't have to be physical. You do know that, right? Your hiding place can be mental. It's an attitude of quietness and of peace. It's an attitude of joy when you find yourself in a place where you feel confused, where you feel battled. 
in rage, you just have to go sit alone and be quiet and just sit in his presence and allow him to be your hiding place. Your hiding place can be as natural as breathing. Try exhaling negative energy and inhaling the word of God. Do that and watch your vision become clearer. My fifth and final point I want to raise is to reside in his presence. When you do that, he says the ashes and the dirt of your life will disintegrate and your God-given beauty will emerge. In, in Psalm 91 and 1, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High God shall abide. He shall rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. In Him will I trust. God just wants you to trust Him. He really does. So therefore, God has promised He's what he has promised us, he is more than able to fulfill. His word will accomplish what he intended it to. He wants you to know that you are the righteousness of God, the glory and the splendor of his majesty. We are cedars of Lebanon. We are the righteous branch of Israel. We need to recognize and remember what he said in Psalm 84, 11 and 12, he said, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. God is our shield. He is our fortress. He will give you favor. He will give you honor. When you walk, according to his way. Finally, God is saying to you, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be you lifted up, you everlasting doors, for the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. He is the king of glory. So what have I said to you today? I've said, God will give you beauty for ashes. That's what I've been preaching. The points I shared with you today is to affirm, to wash, to reside and hide in the Lord. He will give you beauty for ashes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And God keep you. Amen. Amen.